This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Clinton Thurber. I'm joined today by Dr. Paul Zai from Brigham and Women's, and we're here to talk right after the late breaking clinical trial session ablation on Saturday at Heart Rhythm 2024. Dr. Zai, your study was the Real AF Registry, and you presented some results from that. We'll get into the meat of that here in a second, but maybe first take us back before that was conceived. What was the context? What kind of need did you see for a clinical question to be answered? Yeah, yeah. So this, it's a, I, I find that the origin story, I think, is uh, uh, very cool. So a core of us, and orig the original four of us were, were Jose Osorio, myself, uh, Josh Silverstein, and um, uh, oh, he's going to kill me because I'm blanking on his name. I, oh, Amit Dasani. So um, anyway, so we met over a few years, uh, several years ago, with a common interest in uh, initially zero floor ablation, but then we took it beyond that and said that's only one aspect of what we do, how we do procedures that can be better. And so, what if we found a way to evaluate in real world uh, procedures, real world evidence, uh, how we can Im continually improve our procedures? And that sort of gave birth to the registry. We talked to industry specifically in this case was Biosense Webster, and they uh, had, I think, in my opinion, the foresight then to let us run with it and sort of see do how we see fit how to organize and run this registry. So that's how it started. Yep. Um, tell us kind of who you enrolled and what the, uh, what the details of the study encompass, what you found. Yeah, so in, when, you, when you say enrolling, I, would, I like to think about it as not just our patients who are obviously critical, but also operators and centers. So the idea was centers that had already uh, experience uh, to, to a large extent with zero or low floor ablation, high volume centers, and the idea is then if you could maybe take folks who are doing this a lot and try to see what can we tweak, what can we learn to improve the procedure outcomes even further. And so, so um, those are the kinds of patients we are enrolling. So basically AF ablation patients, initially paroxysmal, then eventually also persistent AF patients, uh, eventually with a goal, as you may have seen on the uh, uh, publication as well as our presentation, a goal of about 15,000 patients to enroll with about 100 operators or um, investigators. Mm -hmm. so, nice. Yeah. And what were, um, what were some of your findings? Yeah, so I think the key take-home messages from this presentation today is uh, um, for, uh, with about 2,500 patients that we presented that have had one-year clinical outcome follow-up with detailed procedural data that we analyzed, uh, rigorous, I would say, uh, standard of care clinical follow-up, including periodic monitoring, including clinical follow-up uh, appointments, et cetera. Uh, we saw uh, a number that was just under 82% of our patients at one year were free of all atrial arrhythmias after one ablation procedure uh, for paroxysmal AF patients with a complication rate in, uh, of 1.9%. Uh, and so uh, what I would take home from that is if you do a bit of an apples and oranges comparison with RCTs that have been published within the, even the last couple of years, I think you can say at least tentatively that the uh, freedom from AF rates are notably higher, uh, and, and I would conclude from that further that then the idea is that you can uh, look at all these sort of subtle differences of thing, how you do things within this registry, within what we call Learning Health Network, that lets you incorporate best practices to optimize the procedure. Nice. And um, what are some of the differences in the Learning Health Network model? as a kind of a unique uh, vehicle for research. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's a fascinating uh, concept that I learned about over these years. And so the way I present this is that you think of this as a, as a network of like-minded physicians and staff and researchers who have a goal of wanting to continually improve their procedure, are willing to assess their own procedures, look at where areas of improvement are, and that creates, how I put it, is a, a virtuous uh, cycle, meaning that we use this network to then collect the data in detail for our procedures, the outcomes, the how we do the procedure, that then generates evidence. And when we look at that evidence, if we find signals where we do things this way and it improves our outcomes, then we feed that back into the registry network, meaning then we try to disseminate that approach across the network. And then after a while, you restudy that when it's been disseminated. And if we see consistent improvement in results, then you, you incorporate it again. And then that cycle continues on and on, hopefully. Yeah, it's a neat model. I was impressed by the, by the study results. And congratulations on, on an excellent uh, process there and, and incorporating all those different centers. But, uh, you know, our number, we quote these, we talk with patients in the office. And 
they want to know, is this going to work? And our number seems like it continues to grow over the years. And especially as we learn, you know, sometimes we're impatient. We want the quick fix for AFib and we're hoping the PFA is going to be the silver bullet. And it doesn't look like that's really the case yet. And so, you know, quoting these ever increasing numbers and soon I feel like we're going to get to the point where we can say we expect this to really you know, decrease your aphid burden and really improve your quality of life. It's, it's Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, aside from just our results, I think it's fair to say as a field in general, we can say that uh, now. I mean, I'm not, I don't think anyone should go out on a limb and say we, we, we can cure your aphid, but right. I think you're likely of having a recurrence of aphid, um, you know, after one of these procedures, X time frame out, whatever your data is, you can say confidently that it's quite good. Yeah, you know. and getting better all the time. Yeah, absolutely. That's excellent. Well, thank you again for your results. Congratulations. That study will be published in Heart Rhythm Journal or has been published already simultaneously today. So we encourage all of you to go check that out here at the Lay Breaking Clinical Trial Sessions with Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Clinton Thurber.